Zetsubo no Shima dropped for PC and Xbox One a couple of weeks ago, and it's a really promising look on what the rest of Black Ops 3 Zombies has left in the remaining two installments. Don't get me wrong though, there have been some really disappointing maps, like that excuse for an alternate map we call Bus Depot, but for every bad map, there are two or three good maps that count away. As I haven't really delved into the massive content that the new map has to offer, this list only comprises of maps to Eisendrak and backwards. This is my personal top 5 favourite maps in Call of Duty Zombies. A few things to clear up, this is my personal opinion and I can guarantee that my list has some unpopular choices. And if your favourite map doesn't feature, it doesn't mean it's bad. Just for me, it either gets boring in the high rounds, a really small variation in gameplay, or maybe it just hasn't aged very well. Let's get right into it then. At the number 5 spot is the map 5. See what I mean by unpopular opinions? Like everyone else in the world, Kino blew my mind with its innovation and potential for the next generation of zombies, but it really lacks the difficulty and more relies on luck for the Thunder Gun. Now 5 obviously isn't the most polished map, but it has many experimental features in it that I find very interesting, and while it's as tough as nails, it's fun to boot up every once in a while and give it a couple goes. The control room training spot is really fun, and the Packer Punch is the most convenient and gives you a little breather. The map has its flaws, but it's a really divided opinion. The Wonder Weapon is absolute trash, and while I kind of like the change of pace from the Hellhounds, there is mass hatred for the Pentagon Thief. Massive points for Eminem on the secret song though. Number 4 is Verrooked, the World at War version. Now I'm sure I'm not alone on this one. When I first played this map, I was 10 years old and it was the most terrifying thing that I had ever seen. You're stuck in an abandoned Berlin insane asylum, and if that wasn't bad enough, you're split from half your team. This feature was so cool alone, I had to include this map somewhere on the list. The atmosphere is chilling, the map design is symmetrical to an extent and has many good spots to camp out, and in practice, the whole map can be used to train with. I picked the World at War version over the Black Ops remake because the tweaked zombie AI means you will almost always be hit, while the World at War AI is floaty and you can glide through them sort of. It's hard to explain, but pretty much the zombies stop in place to hit you, meaning while you're sprinting, there's a chance it will miss. This map introduced perks, which if it wasn't for this decision, the ideas of zombies would fall flat on its face. The only downsides of this map are small but costly. There is no Pack-a-Punch, which I know isn't their fault as it was a later addition to the game, but it kinda is a bummer. There is little room for training, which I guess fits the tight institutional design, but it gets pretty insane. If I had to update this map for modern design choices, I would open up the center courtyard, put Pack-a-Punch in the middle, and widen the staircases, because I get caught too much on those. Number 3 is Der Eisendrack. Due to Black Ops 3 having really bad optimization on PC and my computer being on the middle spectrum, the gameplay is relaxing ends and I can't record more than 25 on low graphics. There's a link in the description to this channel if you want to see more of his high round gameplay. The Eisendrak is the prodigal son of Origins, but instead of elemental staffs, it's wacky elemental bows. Set near Austria, it's the latest map, and I'm sure Zetsubo no Shima is just as high quality. The easter egg is actually fun to do, and gives the incentive of all perks for a reward. There is electric cherry, widow's wine, jump pads, balanced panzer soldiers, time travel, blowing up the moon, death rays, dragons, dogs, clocks... You name it, it's in this super fun map meant to kill a couple of hours with some friends. Probably the only flaw with this map, which is evident in Shadows of Evil as well, is how the maps are entirely built around the easter eggs. The level of playability theory I mentioned in my Ascension mod video means basically you can't pick up this map with without having to do the dragons and then you might as well upgrade the bows and then do the rest of the easter egg because the hardest part is over, right? That's why Doris is just such a great map to vent on, so little thought is needed and you can just fly through the rounds. It's nitpicking, but it's the reason it's only number 3 on the list. Coming in at number 2 is Mob of the Dead. If Origins was the father of Der Eisendrak, then Mob of the Dead was basically the whole concept of Shadows of Evil. Peace together, four people who have committed sins in their life are stuck in purgatory while using out of body experiences to progress. Everything in this map is perfect, each hallway created to craft that proper feeling of 1920s Alcatraz and the guns added are perfect. The mini Uzi and Tommy gun are two of my favourite guns in Zombies and I was really 
disappointed that Shadows of Evil didn't expand on this Prohibition era type of guns. I can't get over how rather this map having an overly complicated easter egg, which barely anyone finishes, the easter egg is split up into manageable segments which on their own give rewards, such as completing the wolves and getting the tomahawk. It's really hard to believe that Buried came after this and not building further on this innovating aspect of zombies. There is so much depth, and despite being detached from the main story, it has the quality and depth that we've come to know and love, and that's why it's such a treasured map in my opinion. It has the core elements in its purest form, no elemental weapons, no time consuming strats, and this is what I meant by not being way too overly complex with the easter egg, but not being so dull and repetitive that it just becomes boring. This is the map I think of when I just want to put some music on and just play the game to kill some time and just have fun with it. Not to mention, this is the map which introduced Electric Cherry, hands down my favourite perk in the game. And my favourite map in Black Ops Zombies, Origins. Origins is big, and I recommend everyone with Black Ops 2 to get this map and experience it for yourself. This map is hard, unforgiving and complicated, and new players will be overwhelmed by how much content there is. The only complaint I've ever heard about this map is that there is too much to do. Is that such a bad thing really? This map I actually had to go out and buy a notepad to take down little tips and stuff on just how to function the map right. I've completely filled 8 pages of that book full of how to upgrade the staffs, buildable locations, easter egg steps, panzer drop rounds, what and how to time ice staff parts, what rounds the robots come in threes to fill the chests up, the tank cooldown time, the record locations, the free MG08, how to get extra perk slots, how to get the G strike grenade, it's just crazy how much there is to do to get in this map. It is just so much depth, yet it is easy to pick up and is a great sign of what the future of zombies has to offer. Everything featured in Mob of the Dead and Origins has been featured in later maps because it has just worked so well. The time between rounds is shorter, the perks are plentiful, there are over 40 weapons in the map and the ending ties it all together and even leaked the new characters for the next map, Shadows of Evil, a year before the game was released. The best part of it, I never get tired of it. There are whole wikis devoted to translating the Morse code, the paper scraps, the gibberish notes, the secret songs, it is just about the most influential map of all time, and it is definitely worthy of the top spot as my favourite map. Buy it, find a friend who has it, I don't know, just play it and have your mind blown away. The map on top of everyone's list, Origins. Hopefully you agree with my list, and if I missed a favourite map of yours, it doesn't mean it's bad, don't take this list to heart, and I'm glad that you can enjoy some of the maps that I didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.